Today I'm reading this story about Wendell Scott. Wendell Scott is the first African American to win a race at NASCAR's elite major league level. He was also the first black to be inducted into the NASCAR's Hall of Fame. Racing Against the Odds. The story of Wendell Scott, Scott Carr Racing African American Champion. By Carl Borston Weatherford, illustrated by Eric A. Vasquez. Wendell Scott was in a hurry from day one. He probably walked early, talked early, and walked down supper before you could say pass the peas. When his buddies were skating, playing tag, and pitching horseshoes, Scott was driving his mama to the grocery store in the family car, long before he was old enough to get a license. At 14, he bought his first car, a Ford Model T, for 15 bucks. In no time flat, he tore that clanker apart, rebuilt it good as new. Then he quit school and drove a cab to put his sister through college. Weekend, Scott and a friend went to stock car races, cheered from the stands. Would you have the nerve to race? The friend asked about out of the blue. Shucks, yeah, said Scott. Burning rubber in that cab, Scott made a name for himself with the police, piled up upteenth speeding tickets before he marched off to war. After World War II, those tickets and fines were waiting for him. That put the brakes on taxi driving. Scott opened a garage, married, settled down, and started a family. To make ends meet, he ran moonshine, bootleg whiskey, outran every deputy in the county, so when a race promoter wanted a black driver, the police said, Scott's your man, ain't nobody faster. That race promoter asked Scott to hit the track and he didn't think twice about saying yes. Before you could say, start your engine, Scott has souped up a 1939 Ford with junkyard parts. At the dirt track that day, in 1947, white drivers pulled names from a hat to see who would run him off the track. A record car crowd watched his Ford fall to pieces before the last lap, but Scott was hooked. He meant to race all over the South. Some tracks turned him away, but he came back till they ran out of excuses and let him race. Then he gave them a run for their money. Some white drivers played dirty, banged up Scott's car so bad that he carried spare parts, but a few drivers lent a hand. Once Scott's truck broke down, stranding him on the highway, another driver towed him to the next track. Racing was a family affair. Scott's sons on the pit crew, his daughter keeping score, and his wife Mary driving the race car hauler and serving soul food from the truck. With his own cheering section, Scott could ignore the jeers. By 1961, with a hundred and some wins on the Dixie Outlaw circuit, Scott was ready to move up to the Grand National Races. But how? With hand-me-down cars or hauler converted from an old tire truck and no big money backers? Lap by lap, that's how. Scrimping, scrunching, and sacrificing. Never forgetting he had six mouths to feed. One pocket nearly broke, the other pocket full of dreams. Scott revved his engine, floored the gas pedal, and ripped around that curve. In 1962, when his car turned on its side, he crawled out, tipped it back on its wheels, and drove 30 more laps with gravel slashing his face through the shattered windshield. He stopped only because his sons begged him to. In the summer of 1963, Scott Chevy was running like a charm. At Speedway Park, Jacksonville, Florida, he sped ahead and stayed out front. But when he crossed the finish line, no checkered flag, no. No Wendell Scott wins on the loudspeaker. Then the flag went down for Buck Baker, not for Scott. The judges claimed Scott was third. 
Baker spun into the winner's circle, got a trophy and a kiss from the beauty queen. But the race was not over for Scott. He pressed the judges. Two hours later, they ruled him the winner. By then, the crowds were gone, and the trophy was too. A month later, Scott received a pitiful replacement, a wooden piece of junk for the biggest win of his career, the only NASCAR race ever won by a black driver. Still an underdog, Scott kept racing 10 more years, repairing his own car, painting a mechanical me on the body, putting together entrance fees, dollar by dollar, careful not to blow an engine, and finishing in the top 10 after years. Though strapped for cash, Scott never considered quitting. It took a crash to slow him down. 21 car, 180 miles per hour smash up that crashed his car and more bones than he could count. For months out of the hospital, Scott gave Racing one more shot, drove his last lap in the big leagues, then parked his wrecked Mercury Cyclone behind the garage and let Russ claim it while he fixed customers' cars. Between Racing and his garage, Scott put all his children through college. And when, the ho when Hollywood made a movie about his life, he built three cars for the film and even drove in action scenes. Grease lightning, yes siree. For him, racing was never about money or skin color. He loved to turn the wheel of a race car, work magic on an engine, and then push it faster than it was ever meant to go. Racing pumped through his veins like fuel or a carburetor. Scott didn't just dust the competition, he blazed a trail. My favorite quote by Wendell Scott is, when it's too tough for everybody else, it's just right for me.